Let's imagine that you've identified a sequence that you'd like to convert into a macro. And it's the highlighting sequence that indicates a cell needs attention. So let's say that manually what you've been doing is selecting a cell, giving it a yellow background, a red font, making it bold, italic, applying a border. And you want to use that in multiple locations at different times. You want it at your fingertips by way of a keystroke shortcut. So we can start practically anywhere here. When we turn on what's called the macro recorder, we have the ability to store a macro either in the current workbook, if we think that's the only place we're likely to use it, or possibly in a broader sense in something called the personal macro workbook. And if at one point you save a macro just in this workbook, at a later time you possibly can move it into personal macro workbook or vice versa. And so sometimes when we create macros, we think that they might be widely applicable in other workbooks and we'll save them in personal macro workbook at other times. For example, this one, we're only thinking about this workbook, at least for now. So we've either written down or we remember the sequence of actions that we want to go through. Let's turn on the macro recorder. Now, there is something called a developer tab, which you could use. You don't really need to use that. We can go to the View tab, rightmost button, Macros. Let's click the drop arrow and choose Record Macro. Each of the commands you perform will be saved into the macro so that you can play them back again. The Record Macro dialog box. We need to give this a macro name. We're always prompted with Macro 1, Macro 2, etc. And by all means, make this be a meaningful name. The macro name cannot begin with a number. It cannot contain spaces. You can use upper and lower case. You can use the underscore character to simulate spacing as well. So maybe we simply want to give this a name. How about highlight cells? Put an underscore possibly or simply change case either way, but no spaces. Don't press enter here. Now, a shortcut key is not required, but it certainly is handy. The more macros you write, the more you begin to realize that if you're searching for using a shortcut key with a meaningful letter, what can we use here? Only letters, uppercase letters, lowercase letters. So we've got 52 choices. If the key thought here is cells, would you use a C? Almost a leading question. If we do use control C, to be able to play back this macro, we've overridden the capability of copying by using control C. So there might be a tendency here to use uppercase letters. Do you use control H normally as you use Excel? Maybe you don't, maybe that's the letter you wanna use. But if you hold down the shift key, press H as I did here, the word shift appears here. Let's say this is the keystroke shortcut we're going to use for the macro. Now. At times, you won't use a keystroke shortcut, or possibly you'll forget. At a later point, you can apply a keystroke shortcut, or change it, or get rid of it. If you think you will only use the macro in this workbook, let's store it in this workbook. If you think it has broader applicability, you'll store it in personal macro workbook actually a separate file which you would be creating right now if this is the first time you're using this on this particular machine. Let's say for our current example, we'll just store the macro in this workbook. Now, we're about to click OK, and that means that for the next minute or however long it takes us to record these actions, everything we do will be recorded, with a few exceptions. When you create a macro, by way of the recording process, the steps you take are converted into a programming language called VBA, Visual Basic for Applications. At some point, you may want to visit that environment, make changes to it, but many, many Excel users who write macros don't need to know too much about that environment. I'm going to click OK, and we're going to be in recording mode here. Now, one difference we're about to see on the screen will be in the lower left-hand corner. We do see the word ready, but we're soon to see an icon there as I click OK. An icon, click to stop recording. We can certainly do that or go back to the View tab and click a drop arrow to stop recording. 
but we're in recording mode right now. So we probably don't want to be scrolling like this or doing anything unnecessary. And by the way, that will be in the macro. Wouldn't really hurt. But what are we going to do now? We're going to go through the very steps that we took earlier manually. And we either remember them or we've written them down. So we're going to go to the Home tab. And in no particular order, choose bold and italic. And we don't necessarily have the right feature visible. So we'll go here, choose the thick box border, choose the color we want. Maybe yellow, maybe a recent one, maybe one of these. And choose the font color we want. I chose red earlier, use that again too. And that might be all we want to do. So we're ready to stop recording. Go down to the lower left-hand corner, click the box. Now, when we recorded this action, the active cell was in one location. You would not necessarily know or think this can work on not just one cell, but maybe multiple cells. If we want to execute or play back or run the macro, all those terms are used somewhat interchangeably, we'll press our keystroke shortcut, Control-Shift-H. And if we want to use this in another worksheet, we could certainly go there as well. Just click on a cell, Control, Shift, H. And we could even, for the moment, open another workbook. But since we've defined this to reside only in the current workbook, that's where it will work in the future. If we close this workbook, we won't be able to use this macro elsewhere. So we've just seen how to turn on the macro recorder, record the steps that we want to have automated, and then complete the macro and use that macro wherever we need to use it.